Okay, first of all, Natalie, what's the logic behind the 11 Brentford players you picked? A lot of it is sentimental reasons. I've been coming to Brentford since the late 80s, so I've seen a lot of uh, changes, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. Um, so yeah, a lot of it is down to sentimentality and players that, when I was particularly quite young, I just loved. Just loved what they were doing out on the pitch. Good. Okay, first up, goalkeeper. So. Uh, I've not helped myself here by picking one of the hardest names to spell as a goalkeeper, but I've gone for Wojciech Szczesny. And some people might think that's an, a slightly strange choice, but he was fantastic in the brief spell that he was with us for. And you only have to look at his career and where he's gone to now, having started at Arsenal, then gone to Roma, now at Juventus. There's a reason why he's at those clubs, because he's a very good keeper. And he was, he was excellent here at Brentford. Um, he was crazy. Um, from what I gather in training, he always wanted to play as a striker, always wanted to score the goals in training, obviously never had the opportunity to do it on the pitch. Um, so I liked his character as well and I think um, we, we got to see a, a really young, impressive keeper uh, who's now in the prime of his career. Okay, it's goalkeeper done. Right back. My right back has to be the legend that is Kevin O'Connor. Um, how can you not have Kevin O'Connor in your team? He, he's, what, played 500 times for, for Brentford. Uh, he started out as a, as a striker, um, then obviously it was a right back, then was in central midfield, you know, he did everything for Brentford. Um, a one club man, he had to get in my team, so I thought right back is the best place for him. Okay. Stuart Wakeford managed to miss Kev out altogether in his team. Completely, not in the 11. Yeah. Stuart, that is terrible for him. That's very poor, that's not yeah. what I expect. So it's your right back done, okay. never asked your formation. Oh, 4-3-3. Four, three, three. Four, three, three. It's the best formation, isn't it? It's yep. what we're enjoying right now. What, what has to go with that? Have to go okay. with that. Okay, so first centre back. Uh, I'm going for Captain Fantastic Terry Evans. Um, he, no nonsense, centre half, tough tackler. I don't think you wanted to mess with someone like Terry Evans. And of course, he was the captain that led us to promotion in the 91 92 season. So, you know, what a fantastic season that was. Mm. So he has to be in there, Terry Evans. And uh, yeah. Just as I say, no nonsense, tough tackler, huge man, quite scary. I think in a way I feel I had to put him in there because he might come after me if I didn't. Okay. Would he be a captain in the side as well? Um, possibly, possibly, because yeah. I think he is a, was a great leader. I mean, you can't, if you get a team up as, as he did in the 91-92 season, he had to have done something right on the pitch as a leader. So, yeah, he could be my, my captain. Okay, so to partner Terry Evans at centre half. Okay, so this one... Ivor Ingemarsson, this is one of my sentimental ones. I just loved him and he was a part of that, that team that probably should have gone up in the 2001-2002 season. He, um, I, I can't, in a weird way, I can't quite remember him, but I just always remember just fondness for him. And I actually remember uh, coming to Griffin Park at the end of the season when they had a end of season family day on the pitch. And I went up to him and I begged him not to leave, but he did leave. Um, so I was gutted when he left. But I just remember thinking, I love him. And I don't know why, but I just did. So it's sentimental. He left shortly after the playoff final, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He went to Wolves. Didn't last very long at Wolves, did he? Uh, went to Brighton and Reading. And again, played in the Premier League with, with Reading, didn't he? So he had a great career. And, and I like to think that well, obviously we helped him along with that. And I think he had really fun times here. And I think he came here as an amateur as well. So. Mm. To, to make your professional career coming from Iceland over here, I think you had a brief loan spell with Torquay before that, but to actually start your proper professional career here, I think is a great story and, uh, and one we should be proud of. Good. Uh, to complete your back four. Ah, now, Martin Granger. Again, slightly sentimental. I loved him. I loved what he did on the pitch. I thought of him a little bit, and this might, there might be a theme here. Granger, Michael Dobson, um, Jake Bidwell, might be the fact they didn't have much hair, that they were a bit of bulldogs. That's how I looked at them. They were, they were uh, again, you wouldn't want to mess with them. And, and Martin Granger was a great tackler, fantastic defender, I thought. And scored a few goals as well. Sep, he specialist. Oh my goodness, did he score some amazing free kicks. Um, so yeah, I thought, again, going back to, to years gone by, but yeah, Martin Granger would be my left back.
Okay, so that's your defensive unit complete. Yes, you have sort of squeezed it all in, haven't I? Um, okay, so first up, Remain Sawyers. I can't ignore Remain Sawyers. I'm going to put him on this side. Um, I just think he is doing wonders for Brentford right now. Um, yeah, I know some people would say he didn't have the best first season with us. I actually thought he did all right, considering it was a step up from League One. Um, but my goodness, is he growing from strength to strength? He's such a tricky footballer. I don't know how teams come up, you know, how they play against him. I imagine it must be really difficult because you just don't know what he's going to do. Um, so yeah, Romain Soares has to get in my team. A bit of an unsung hero, would you say? Yeah, although I do think people are now coming around to thinking, actually, he's a really, really good player. And uh, one is, I reckon, destined to go further as well, hopefully with Brentford and, and, and in the Premier League with us. But I do think he has the potential to, to go even further. He's a pick of Peter Gillums as well. There you go, you see? So Peter knows best. Partner, Romain. So, because it's my 4-3-3, three, three, I've got sort of a holding midfielder in, in Douglas. Um, but obviously when he came to Brentford, he was a holding midfielder. But with Mark Warburton, he, got, he had more of an attacking role. So he became a bit more of a box-to-box -box midfielder. And a really experienced player. Okay, I might have a, a personal reason to put him in there as well. And I probably wouldn't be allowed to not put him in there. Um, but yes, I actually thought he was brilliant for us. And someone I think we missed a bit when he left initially because he had that experience he had that leadership um he scored goals you know as i say box to box he knew where th he could read the game i always thought read the game really well knew where to be and and so that's why he gets in my team because i think i want that midfield experience and he brings that okay. so i've got an inter international feel to my team you've got saint kitts with sawyers represented we've got the republic of ireland through douglas and then i've got paul evans the welsh international uh, he's in my side as well and again i think the reason i put him in there is one again strong leadership but a very much a no-nonsense midfielder um i think he um again another player you wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't want to come up against maybe not because of the trickery of sawyers but because mm. he's a bit scary um he was not the tallest but that didn't stop him uh, out on the pitch showing his might and muscle. And also, you can't forget those goals that he scored from the halfway line. Were you there for those? I was here for the Preston one. Okay. And I remember being sat there with my dad and both of us going, what is he doing? Oh my God, he scored. So, you know, uh, yeah, I, I remember those two goals in particular because it was scored within a week, wasn't it? Um, at Burnley as well. And, you know, the fact that he could chip in with goals like that and not just from the halfway line. I mean, he was able, obviously, to score fantastic goals mm. nearer to the goal. Um, but he was very useful at chipping in uh, with, with goals for the, for the team. So Paul Evans would be in there as well. Okay, it's a strong midfield. It is a strong midfield. I'm quite happy with my midfield. Yeah, I like it. Nice, so front three. Okay, so my front three, I am going for Ollie Watkins. So I think it worked perfectly, obviously, that him and Sawyers can combine in this team anyway. But also, I mean, Ollie Watkins has just taken to the championship like he was always born to play in, at this level, if not higher. Um, I think he is just fantastic, such a strong player. Uh, he can muscle people out the way when he's, and he's such a natural, naturally gifted player, I think, as well. Uh, on the ball, off the ball. Um, I do believe he should be, if Mason Mount can get in the England team, and don't get me wrong, Mason Mount is brilliant, then Ollie Watkins, he should be somebody that's considered for England as well because he is brilliant and he's only going to grow from strength to strength. Another one for me, Exeter City production line there as well. Oh, okay. All right. You're, you're having that one. Okay. Okay. So to sit in the middle. I'm going for Holdsworth, my love, my hero, Dean Holdsworth. He, he, he's obviously the up front. So he is my, um, he, he would be my first love when it came to a Brentford player. I um, probably was only, I don't know, nine or ten, or I might have been a bit older, I don't know. Um, and I just, the fact that he could score goals, I think when you're that young, a player that can just bang in goals like he did, was just, he was a star to me. Mm. Uh, and obviously, again, instrumental along with Terry Evans in, in getting Brentford up in that 91-92 season, what was it, 38 goals that he scored? I mean, he was phenomenal. Obviously, that earned him a move to Wimbledon, and he went on to have a, a very successful career as well. Um, I, there was just something about Dean Holtz. I remember meeting him walking up the stairs in, in the Braemar Road stand, and I just—I I kind of bumped into him, but I just stood there gawping because I couldn't believe. 
Dean Holdsworth was right in front of me. Mm. Um, so he, he would, he's my main man. Okay. Yeah. 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 Final player. Well, if you have Dean Holdsworth, you've got to have Gary Blissett. Because what a, what a formidable partnership they had. They had. And, and, you know, it does come down to, again, that I, I keep going back to the 91-92 season. It's not a season that I can say I, I remember fondly because I was very young. But it just goes down in folklore. And, and that combination of Holdsworth and Blissett was just unbelievable. Um, and, and that's what got us up, that the, the strength of those two up, up front for, for Brentford. And I mean, that team as a whole was fantastic, but we have seen teams along the way being fantastic. Um, we've seen some not so great teams, but individual performances that have shone still. Um, but yes, I, I, I think that 91-92 season for me stands out as well because of the parade in the town centre. The, I remember the open top bus parade. And thing. I just remember bits of it, but we couldn't help but smile and it brought Brentford town together. It was great. So some big characters in there. Yeah. Who's managing that lot? Yeah, this is a tough one. The whole thing, may I say, was really tough. Yeah. I said it was sentimental, but there are so many players that could get into this team. There's so many players even in the current squad. Mm. I know I've got two of them, but they could easily break in. You've got Daniel Bentley could have easily been my goalkeeping choice. And, and then you've got some of the Mepham and Conza even. So I apologize I didn't get them all in there. Um, but I've actually gone for Mark Warburton. Um, because obviously when he took over from Uwe Rosler, we all know what happened. We went on a fantastic run, we got promoted, and then he took us into the championship. And that first season in the championship was just, even now I have to pinch myself and think, did that really happen? We got to the playoffs. I mean, that was unheard of. That wasn't meant to happen for a little team like Brentford getting into the championship. So uh, that for me stands out as, a season that I will always think, wow, what, what could have been? I mean, it, it would have been amazing for Brentford to have got into the Premier League, oh, you know, straight away as successive promotions. But it still was a fantastic season nonetheless, despite the defeat to, to Middlesbrough. Um, it was, yeah, it was unbelievable. You mentioned that little Brentford tag. Do you think that's something that actually really suits the club, that fly under the radar, a lot of the work here? I think so. Yeah. I think so. And I think it's something that we should actually use to our advantage. Um, I don't want to say that we are a little club because this is Brentford, it's not a little club. And if you don't know who Brentford are, then shame on you. But um, I, I think, yeah, sometimes we do go under the radar. Um, but I, as I say, I think that is something that is working in our, at our advantage. But equally, I think people are starting to recognise what we do. Um, they're starting to recognise how we play, that we play really attractive football, uh, that we are an expansive side. We use this pitch to our advantage. Um, we go out all attack and it's a joy to watch and I can only hope that this will continue for, for many seasons to come. Indeed. If you could stick Warburton on there. Oh yes, sorry. Um, I'll just put him here. I, I haven't really done my form formation very very well, it's bear in mind. Three to me. Yeah, but with, I mean, they probably should have gone a bit further up, but hey-ho, you know, that's and how I've written your signature. <gasps> oh, my signature. Oh, see, this is what I was leaving the room for, you see, my huge signature, but no, I'll just do a quick one. There you go. So that is my 11. And may I say, it would win everything. <laughs>